fandom and welcome to this very important video putting together even more pieces of the puzzle in the conspiracy against Paramahamsa Sri Nityananda. Um, they have both had very close personal relationships with the men who were the conspirators behind the attack against Nityananda. Monster who is your ex-husband? His name is Douglas McKellar. Is when I came to know he is conspiring against Swamiji. He and Vinay both approached me and asked me to put a false allegation against Swamiji. Vinay Bharadwaj, right after he had approached um, Mahaprabha for a um, for lying about Swamiji, he started to actively pursue this sexual relationship with me. He knew you were 12 years old. Yes, of course okay. he knew. Um, the full story of this attack against Swamiji. Up until early 2010, up until you can say early February 2010, Swamiji was like a rising star, not only in the Indian spiritual community, but in India in general. If you went to any of his programs, there would be easily 30,000, 40,000 people in queue, sometimes two or three days in advance, just for one hug from him. Now, that all changed overnight at the onset of the Kumbha Mela when a fake video was leaked by a group called Sun TV, the now defunct Sun TV, um, for whom the COO is behind bars. Um, the video that Sun TV played was the video that basically came as the product between uh, the alliance between these three men, and so Douglas and Vinay and Lennon. Now, the way that they morphed this video of the actress Ranjita and made it look like she was in a compromising position with Swamiji, you literally knew that they had the capacity to do that because they threatened they were going to do the same thing with you. Correct. And my ex-husband is also a graphic designer. Mm -hmm. By profession, he does that too. Wow. Wow. Now, what it's boggling my mind and I'm sure a lot of viewers are also wondering and I've seen this comment on Facebook a lot of people myself included up until very recently had no idea that we actually know who the conspirators are um, for example I thought Sun TV was behind the whole thing because they wanted to extort money I didn't realize there was a whole other group of people trying to extort money now I understand that after um, being put on trial for his actions against you. Vinay Bharadwaj tried to kind of divert the attention off of himself as a convicted child molester. Mm -hmm. He tried to divert that attention onto Swamiji. What claim did he make at that time to try to pass off the attention? Um, in order to run away desperately from the allegations made against him and what later would be his uh, prison sentence. Mm. Um, he accused and falsely accused Swamiji of trying to, of sexually abusing and molesting him mm. later on in, um, in, in 2006 and 2005. So actually when he did not find a victim to um, to say something against Swamiji, he himself had lied and came, come and said some lies about Swamiji um, in a, a civil case in Los Angeles. So um, clearly here he's desperately trying to... So he tries to force a 12-year-old girl to claim that Swamiji had had sex with her. Mm -hmm. She refused. He tries to force the wife of one of his friends to claim that she had had sex with Swamiji. She refused. Finally, he can't find a female victim, so he pretends he's a victim. Yeah. At the time, how old was he? At the time, he was um, two, uh, 30, 33. And Swamiji was in his 20s. Mm -hmm. Now, by, by legal definition, a molestation is when someone preys on someone else who is weak, preys on someone who is vulnerable. Is he an educated man, the Sweeney? Very mm -hmm. well educated. Yeah, he very well in, educated. He went to Indian Institute of Technology. Oh, mm -hmm. so he's he's educated as an engineer. Mm -hmm. 
and he's older than Swamiji. Mm -hmm. Was he physically inept in some way? Was he wheelchair bound? Was he crippled? Mm -hmm. So how is it that a fully competent, educated, older and physically healthy man could be molested by a younger male? Not educated. Not educated. Self -pro Swamiji refers to himself as a simple village boy from Tamil Nadu. How could a simple village boy from Tamil Nadu molest an older educated man? Mm -hmm. It's not possible. So I think for me personally, that detail itself is clear enough evidence that he was so desperate to try to make Swamiji out in a bad light that if he couldn't find a fake victim, he would make himself a fake victim. Mm -hmm. But that ultimately didn't work. Nobody believed his story. Mm -hmm. And so the then what did... Mm -hmm. The fact that um, he was already charged with and sent to prison by mm -hmm. the time they went to court in Los Angeles uh, and went to trial uh, definitely um, hindered his process in mm -hmm. putting that case against Swamiji. Okay. So then we skip forward a little while. The morphed video they created with Ranjita hits the air. And India basically goes crazy. People try to burn brahmacharis alive in this campus. Um, reporters are instigated to try to tear the saris off brahmacharis and catch them in unflattering pictures to make it look like something devious is going on here. They didn't leave it at that, did they? They continued to pursue fake victims. And they finally caught one. Now, we in India are all familiar with the false accusations put forth by one liar named Arti Rao. We know for a fact she's lying because she's disease riddled. She's so contagious that her own medical report states if she even just touches her lips, she can pass on herpes. Um, the dates that she claims Swamiji raped her in this ashram, Swamiji himself wasn't even physically in the ashram, he was traveling. Mm -hmm. And yet a lot of people are listening to her stories. Mm -hmm. What I'm wondering is, is there any way that we can link these two cases? Um, the two who tried to coerce the both of you into line, the two who framed, um, created the fake video of Ranjita. Yeah. Did they have any contact with Arthi Rao? Right, in July of 2009. This is simultaneously why he's trying to pursue, trying to manipulate and completely brainwashed me. Mm -hmm. um, and I was just, I had just turned 13 at that time. Mm -hmm. Simultaneously, he's trying to find other victims because the more victims he has, the stronger case he Do has. Do you know he approached other women? Yes. And he um, mm -hmm. had only later I had found out that at the time he approached, um, he had called Arti Rao on the phone. Mm -hmm. And um, at the time, she was known as Premeshwari Mai here mm -hmm. in uh, India. He had called her, asked her, Do you know? Um, do you know that Swamiji is having sex? Do you know that there are other female sannyasis or females in the who are saying this? And he was particularly saying um, Sri Prabha, which was um, the ex-husband, mm -hmm. Douglas McKellar. Particularly saying that um, he knows this and he has he's going to do something about it. He mm -hmm. says those exact sentences to Adi Rao and immediately her first reaction is to refuse entirely and not only that she sends an email reporting all of this wow. to the secretary of swamiji at the time refusing completely what did she say in that email to the secretary she said she she lets the secretary know that um she feels that there are disgruntled people ex-members of the foundation who for whatever reason want to take revenge on Swamiji, and uh, she agrees with the fact that uh, a, a scandal or something like this that he is planning is going to be extremely dangerous to the entire um, name of Swamiji at the time because she also recognizes Swamiji's name right. was um, very high yes. and growing, and she recognized that people would do this for money. Oh. So, in this case, it clearly shows that though later on Atira was convinced, perhaps, um, perhaps by Lenin Karpin, whom she she uh, had a relationship with, um, she initially refused this 
completely, mm -hmm. showing that her allegations against Swamiji are completely false. Absolutely. Just changing your story like that does not happen to a real victim, no. and I can say so for a fact. Yes, of course. And see, the other thing is, if she was a victim in any way whatsoever, when they approached her, maybe she would have said no, maybe she would have said yes, depending on her own reasons, her own fears, her own, um, you know, sense of morality at the time, her own moral compass. But certainly if she was a victim, whether she said yes or no to those who were planning this attack, mm -hmm. she definitely wouldn't have said an email to tip off Swamiji's secretary and inner circle. Mm -hmm. A rape victim would not notify the rapist, hey, watch out, people are on to you. Mm -hmm. So that email, do we still have a copy of this? Yes. And wow. We can show it. We can show everyone right now mm. how Arti is... Um, how Arti is saying to the secretary that she is very concerned about wow. Swamiji. She's very concerned about his um, safety and mm. his, she's very concerned about his future mission. Wow. Speaking clearly that she cared about this mission. Yes, and, that and she, she cared about him. And that she cared about him. Wow. Suddenly what happened? We